Hey guys, I'm back again, and I decided to do this video. Today's my day off, plus it's really quiet, which is a miracle, because usually this whole area is so, oh my God, so noisy. Then we have a, I don't know, somebody that moved back there, a woman that she's pretty loud too at the same time, but I think she's gone. So I said to myself, well, she's gone. Let me do a tutorial. And uh, yeah, these people, I don't know where my brother finds these people or how they, I don't know, how they uh, they come here, uh, you know, and then at the same time, they, they scream loud, they talk loud. It's like they want the whole world to listen to their conversation. Oh, my Lord. And it's so hard for me to do a tutorial. I don't know. Um, I'm probably going to give up one day. Who knows? Anyway, it's not going to happen because I love doing this, but I'm just going to have to wait till it's like really, really quiet because I cannot do videos when it's there's so much noise. It's just incredible. And before I start, let me uh, get some because uh, I don't know what it is. I'm get, I'm still get, catching a cold, and it's that that air conditioning All right, I have a friend, uh, her name is Annette, and she asked me uh, what was the name of this book, because it looked like she was interested in it, and I had another person also that came to my message and asked me what was the name of that book, that I didn't mention the name of the book, uh, because I was just demonstrating that day that um, this book had sort of like, um, you know, Kind of like the Loomis method, but it's just a little bit different, more like comic book style. You can see it's more like comic book style. Uh, but I forgot to mention the name of the book. So the name of the book is uh, Creatures and Features, Draw Amazing Monsters and Aliens. And it's by also by Impact. And like I said, Impact, it's got a lot of books. Um, so look them up. And the creator of this book is Randy Martinez. Okay. So now that we got that out of the way, um, I'm going to show you a couple of pages. Nothing big, because the problem with this is the um, the uh, the techniques are kind of hard to um, analyze. Uh, in a way, it's a little bit complicating. So like always, it's got the introduction. The art is phenomenal. I mean, the art is really cool. It's very cartoony, very comic book style. The, the problem is that the um, maybe I'll do a video on this book, um, probably figuring out how, or maybe I'll do it today. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of unpredictable. So like always, like every book, it tells you shapes, how shapes become this, shapes become a basketball, shapes could be a soda can, cylinder into a soda can. And yeah, um, and, um block shape could become a briefcase you know uh, an ice cream comb this could be a, sort of like a triangle with two circles an ice cream comb and then this one could be an alien also and this one could be like a guitar so it's giving you you know it's a little bit different from the uh from the marvel books and then you can see the comparison of you know of the body here and the comparison of the shapes everything three-dimensional forms you know, block shapes, circles for the breast, and this and that. Of course, um, it's a little bit exaggerated, but it's you. It's up to you as the artist to figure all this out. Okay, so let's uh, go on. I already showed you this the other day, the head, the human head, and it's sort of like the Loomis method. So what this artist did, and let me give you an idea what he did. He did the segments, of course, but you could do it the way. Um, uh, Romero does it, and as actually um, Andrew Loomis does it, he just they just do a circle, 
And then they do a line in the middle. Then after that, they do the segments for the hair bra. Yeah, the hairline. The... But this one is a little bit different because this is, uh, for example, the eyebrow line should be over here where the center is. But the reason why he did that did it that way because I guess he wanted to, uh, to do the eyes over here, then the nose over here. And, of course, this looks a little bit more different. I mean, you could use it. Uh, it's sort of like the Loomis method, and you can try it this way. You know, you can try to do the segments for the eyes first instead of the... Uh... So let me explain this real quick, okay? So, because... And I'm just only going to do... Um... Let me get some paper. I'm just going to do... Um... We could see through here. That's good. All right. So, this is the circle. This is the vertical line. So he sliced, like just like the Loomis method. Usually the Loomis method is always in the center, the, um, the horizontal line. But this time, what he did was the eyes over here, I think, right? And then the hairline over here, right? And then the nose line over here. Usually on the Loomis method, the Loomis method is um, sort of like this. It usually starts in the center, then the nose line here. Let me see if you guys can see. Oh, okay, good. Because I got to check the camera. This is ridiculous, the, this um, phone. All right, so then the chin. Okay, right there. That's mostly like the Loomis method and the Riley method also. But this artist uh, actually took a different approach. So the nose line would be here and the chin would be around here. So... My greatest guess is that if you look at this, and let's see if this works. I mean, you know, you, you just never know. After this book, I also got some cool stuff that I um, took notes from Google and from my old classes that I took from Ed Foychuk, uh, How to Draw Comics, uh, dot not, I think is yeah, How to Draw Comics. Uh, I'm gonna actually give you the link also. Um, it's called Umity. Uh, I think I wrote it down here. Let me see. Uh, Umidi. Not really sure, but I know I wrote it down here. It's something like this. Um, Umidi. I can't check right now because I'm afraid that the the um, the filming might stop. So maybe I think I wrote it down here. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. No, I didn't. No. No, I didn't. No. Okay, I know I wrote it somewhere, but I just can't remember where I wrote it. But if anything, um, what I'll do is I'll snap a picture of it and then I'll post it on YouTube so you guys can see it. Uh, this app, I'm telling you, it's got a lot of courses. Some of them are sort of like uh, Mickey Mouse courses, but there are some that are really good by Robert Marzulu and Drawing um, Comics uh, not, uh, dot .net and also by Chuck... Um, uh, um, Ed Foychuk. Okay, so we're gonna do today after I show you this book, we're definitely gonna do Ed Foychuk and then Robert Marzullo at the same time. Okay, so my greatest guess: the nose is here, the chin is here. So let's see how this works. Um, he slices right, and then he brings down probably the the jaw should be here. Now I don't know if this is gonna work. You know, it, there might be a good chance that it might work. Who knows? So my greatest guess that he would do the eyes in the center right here. But um, pretty much like I mentioned the other day, that you sort of like count, like you see here, it's like one, two, three, four, five, six space. Well, actually, no, it's like one, two, three, four, five eyes. Some people use the eye, uh, five eye method to do the, you know, the whole set of eyes. Or some people use the three eyes. I usually visualize the eyes. I would actually start right here better. Like that. And do the other segment here and the other segment here. So that would be the, the shape of my um, face. So I start shaping the face all the way down to where the chin is. Then I do the planes. 
But notice that the planes are outside the segments. So it goes here, it goes out, just like the uh, Hogarth method or the George Bridgman. You might mm, probably might um, notice it. It's more like the uh, George Bridgman method and stuff. So, uh, okay, so then the planes will be around here. Go straight down like that. Right, so then, and I'm going to start working with the nose. And a triangle for the nose. And right here would be the mouth. Okay. Now it seems like the head is too big. So all you got to do is, here's a hairline. You just measure where the hairline is. Actually, it's supposed to be here. Kind of. And then you just do the rest. You do the ears. So this, this whole process is completely, totally different. Very different from the Loomis method. And the reason why that is, is because the eyes are closer to the circle and the nose is right where underneath the circle is. Remember that the Loomis is right here, the nose, the nose line. You know, and with this technique, you can do the, the Riley technique also, which we're going to work with that today, also later on. Because I want to do everything slowly. I don't want to rush you guys. That you sort of like bring in, sort of like a tennis ball technique thing. Then you slice over here. This is more like the Riley method. And then the planes, of course, shaped of the face first. And then you do the the planes that come right near where the ears are. So this is a total different go ball game here. Okay, guys. All right. So yeah, let's keep on looking at the book for now. And I, like I said, I can't promise you that I that I'm gonna do every single thing here because what I want to work with you guys is Marzulu and Ed Foychuk. So let me put this in order because I don't want to mix this up here. Hold on. I want to put the Ed Ford Chuck stuff together and the Marzulu last. Okay. And we still got some more stuff from Marzulu to um, study from the book that I made, but slowly, little by little. Okay, let's uh, keep looking at the book. So, like I said, this is more like creatures and monsters. So it's giving you ideas, of making animals into creatures. You could transform animals into humanoids, all kind of stuff. The bat, the uh, ragatan, ragatan, the ragatan, and the parrot, the the frog, the tiger, the rhinosaurus. Here we have the hand. And you could tell that the hand in blue because you can see the blue. I don't know if you guys can see the blueprint, but you see it's sort of like a gesture. And here's another gesture also for this alien hand. So, you know, what's really good about this book is the fantasy. You know, you, you, know, uh, you get ideas from this book. So try it out. I'm pretty sure you can find this on eBay or Amazon. Well, you can find a lot of drawing books a lot on eBay and also on Amazon, mostly on Amazon. You can find very cheap, especially they sell them from, you know, used bookstores. So you might be lucky to find most of the books that I've shown you. And plus when they closed a lot of bookstores because, you know, the economy was so bad, especially all the CD stores. I remember the CD stores like Specs, Virgin Records, all of that closed. It was amazing. Yeah, because, uh, of course, the Internet um, actually took over and that was a new revolution. And then people started downloading music and then downloading books and this and that, whatever. Um, but you know something? Um, I rather I'm old school. I rather like uh, look at stuff from a regular DVD movie, just pop it in the DVD player. Uh, it's a good thing they still sell DVD players. And uh, how do you call it? Um, 
you know, hear a DVD once in a while, uh, you know, a CD once in a while. So I'm old school. Uh, my brother, he likes to watch movies and Netflix in the phone. And I told him, dude, that's bad for your vision, man. Because you're, you're actually forcing your eyes to see something small. So it's better to see it in widescreen. So most of the time, I'm, I'm always watching movies from widescreen. Anyway, let me explain this book. Like, as you can see, it's pretty much like a stick figure, you know, formula, method, technique. I'm also going to show you a cool technique by Ed Foychuk after this. It's very similar to this method, and you're going to love it. It's really great. It's great for drawing figures, and uh, it's very simple. I'm telling you, you're going to love it. So yeah, this is more like uh, when you're doing the um, stick figure and you add shapes, circles, balloon shapes, ovals. But, you know, I am so sure that this artist doesn't use all this. He's just giving you the idea that the body, you can form it and you see it as, you know, shapes, cylinder shapes and circles. Most artists just go, like sometimes I just do some simple lines and just do the outline because I've been drawing for years. Remember, every how to draw book is not the same how the professional artist actually works. Like, for example, Robert Marzullo, the uh, book that I showed you before. He was showing you a different process from the book. But the, when you see him work, that is why I am doing videos on Robert Marzullo, because I analyze pretty much how he works with the gestures and the figures in a sort of simple way and sort of like a shortcut. So that's coming soon because I'm going to start all over with Robert Marzullo. I actually figured out a better way how to do his techniques. So you can see it's all about shapes, you know, necessarily you don't have to do it that way. You just have to figure it out by doing outlines and stuff like that. Just, you know, train your eye to see the shapes of the, of the body. That's all you have to do is train your eye. Your eye is you know, your mind could actually help you out in seeing these things, okay? So you're training your eye to see all these things. Here is we have Frankenstein. It's a cool drawing of Frankenstein, I gotta admit. Very cartoony, kind of like Mad Magazine style. And then here's the segments right here, you see? You can see that he starts in red, then he does the blue, the lines of the eye. So this is pretty much like the Fernando Ruiz technique that Ru Ruiz, he starts with an oval, then he does the segments, and he does the grid lines for the eyes. After that, he's he does, you know, the shapes for the eyes, the nose, the cheekbones, the ears, whatever. And that's step by step. What's good about this guy, that this is not like the Marvel books that they just, they don't show you too much. At least he's showing you how to do it you know, step by step, you got one, two, three, four, five, six steps here. Most of this stuff is probably um, all five and six steps. This is also made by shapes. Here's the original drawing right here. And this is the process to the drawing right here. And then after that, you finish it in ink. And I know most of you already know how to do ink. Here is another one here. This is uh, the Gremlin, how to draw the Gremlin. Uh, let me show you the original drawing of the Gremlin. And then here's the process of drawing the Gremlin. Again, if you see this, this kind of reminds you, and it looks like he used the Dan Jurgen technique, which is something like, uh, show you right now, something like this. This is the waist, and then he does the lines for the leg coming out this way, and then another line for the other leg. So always remember that all this here is going to be the hip area, which is the pelvic. So that's what he's showing you right here, except that he used like, you know, block shapes and cone shapes. Then after that, he starts forming all the details, the fleshing, he starts refining the whole drawing. And then after that, he does the inking process right there. Okay, so here we have the green rip ripper. And uh, of course, this is a different process right here, step by step. Um, here's another process of the headless horseman. 
the Headless Horseman. And here's the, the dinosaur. And how to draw the Megalon child. Ooh, excuse me. Jaws like shark. Oh, I used to love the Jaws movie. It was awesome. And just in case, guys, if you if I sound a little bit tired, it's because um, even though I did rest a lot, it's just the medication I took yesterday for my... Um, um, prostate problem it just gives you a lot of side effects so bear with me I'm gonna to try to make this happen here we have another stick figure but this is a little different and of course um, the lines are in the center of the whole hip area right here then he starts doing the uh, refining the body then then he becomes creative this is like a, a mummy in a tomb or something that's what it is the mummy here we have the Swamp Monster. I really recommend you guys to, you know, um, look for Umidi. I think it's Umidi or Edumi or something. I think it's Edumi or Udumi. And Udumi um, actually has a whole bunch of courses. And I really recommend you guys take the Ed Foychuk um, courses. How to Draw Action um, Heroes. You're going to see it. You can't miss it. Or look it up. Um, drawing apps, whatever, and you'll find it. But if I do come across it again, whatever, I'm going to take pictures of it, snap pictures of it, and then um, I'll post it. Uh, you can see um, this is a little bit different, um, drawing the head. Even though it's small, but it gives you an idea how to draw the head. Um, again, you know, it's a circle, the... Um, the jaw shape and after that you do the grid lines to do you know the eyes the nose and then you know everything starts refining you know you start refining everything and i think that's like uh yeah dracula with his bride i think it's ready to bite her pretty neck there okay and then we got the werewolf how to draw the werewolf step by step you have the lines the segments Notice that every technique in this book is different. Uh, some of them look, you know, similar to a whole bunch of other people that I know. But you can see there's oval shapes, circle shapes, in order to do this uh, werewolf right here. You see the grid lines again on the face, on the witch. This is a flying witch. And this one is the Yeti, how to draw the Yeti. And this is the step-by-step uh, -step process. And this is the Cerebus, the, yeah, the Cerberus. Sort of like a, a three-dog myth, mythical legend thing, you know, those early monsters, whatever. You know, mythology kind of stuff, that's what it is. I remember as a kid, I used to love those stories, read them all the time, mythology, Medusa and all that stuff. In fact, I do have a movie, but I haven't seen it in a long time. So I forgot the name of it, but it's got a lot of great actors. Let me see if it says it right here. It could be it says it right here. I don't know. Nah. Well, it says, yeah, the Greek mythology, but it doesn't say the famous movie. Well, if any of you guys watching, please correct me because I forgot the name of the movie when they made Medusa and uh, I don't know, so many characters in that movie. I just forgot the names because I, I haven't seen those movies, those type of movies I haven't seen in years. Okay, so here we have a more closer, you know, facial head this sort of like uh, also has to do with mythology the cyclops a race of giants each with a huge single eye below its brow yeah pretty cool stuff people and here we have the dragon awesome stuff
griffin. It's like half bird and half tiger, I think. Yeah, you can tell it's like... Well, all this stuff is like mythology. There's another book I have, which is really good too. A friend of mine actually... Let me show it to you. And like I mentioned before, that Walter Foster books got a lot of great books. And this is one of them, Dragons and Fantasy. A friend of mine gave me uh, this book. He actually ordered it for me. Um, and it's got dragons, mythology. Again, you can see the, you know, the gesture as a stick figure. Um, but I don't do it this way. I usually visualize it. And I'm going to show you some great methods by box office uh, hit, I think, and also at Foychuk, that um, you don't really have to use cubes and cylinders. It's all about visual effect, which I'm going to show you soon. So this is also another great book um, that will show you how to draw mythology and stuff. The, the pencil, the reason why I didn't show you uh, this book before is because sometimes the pencil, you can't see it that much because it's made in pencil. And then um, you only could see when it's finished, when it's already rendered. You see, you can see that very clear. But the penciling on the first process doesn't show that much. But now that we're looking at this book, let's see. Because all I got to do is when I finish this video, then I'll just check to see how this came out. Otherwise, I'm going to have to maybe put more light or something. I don't know. Maybe, yeah. Let's try it this way. So you could you can see all this is sort of mythology and stuff. Very uh, creative stuff. And then we have the mermaid right there. I have other books also that will show you this, uh, like stuff like this, like fantasy stuff that I got a long, long time ago, and it's a little bit old, and it's a, kind of ripping up a little bit. I'm thinking of probably maybe ordering it again. Um, the thing is the methods and the techniques, it's very, very complicating. It's like you, if you're drawing with messy lines. Um, there is uh, several methods that, you know, you can draw action figures by messy lines, which I've seen by, by this guy, uh, Aventura. Uh, I forgot his whole name, but anyway. Uh, you can see block shapes and oval shapes, you see? So it doesn't really have to be, like, the way he did this was probably something like this. So let me show you, give you an idea how he did this. Um, and since I'm already practical doing gestures and techniques, so I have an idea how he did this and I'm going to show you. So yeah, here's the block shape right here and like that and another block shape here, then ovals. You can see, I don't know if you guys can see the ovals, but this it's very light though. So then um, ovals here for the legs and oval here for the, you know, the calf of the leg. I think that's what it's called, the calf. And then um, another oval here for this leg. Then he ends the bottom of uh, the uh, pelvic right here, which is the um, block shape. So all this is like a block shape, okay? So and then the rest is ovals. But you can't see it that much here because the pencil is very light. And that's one of the reasons why I didn't show you this book. But maybe you guys can see it. I don't know. Maybe it's in my head. And then I'll show you some, you know, ideas from drawing heads. And so all this is sort of like mythology. Things are just invented by man, you know. You can see here another uh, stick figure right here. And then you have oval shapes, little by little forms. Um, but like I said, all you got to do is use your mind. You don't really have to use you know, cylinders and block shapes, you can actually visualize it. And I'm going to show you some real cool stuff. 
that I actually picked up. Here we have the Hydra snake with, I don't know, it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven heads. Seven head snake. Yeah, all this stuff is all fantasy stuff. Then we got the Kraken. I think they're talking about the, the uh, octopus, I think. Yeah, the octopus. Yeah, you know something I never seen in, in real life television, a real octopus, only it's like small octopuses. Uh, but I never seen anything that like in the movies, like fantasy movies, they show them real big, that can actually bring down a boat. Uh, that is pure fantasy. Stuff like that you would see in like movies that has to do with Medusa and... Damn, if only I could remember the name of the movie. Oh, Clash of the Titans. Yes, now I remember. <laughs> How could I forget that? That was one of my favorite movies. Oh my God, I'm getting too old, people. Well, yeah, that's what it is. Clash of the Titans. Yeah, that was the, uh, the mythology movie. And there were some other great movies that had to do with uh, Clash of the Titans. That slowly is coming to my mind, but I just can't remember them right now. How many of you remember the black hole? That was about, that was also another fantasy, like way, way back. The black hole. Anyway, let's go on with the book. Here's the monitor. The monitor grew and, and became the, the, the Fucurious. Sort of like a... Uh, also, I think um, Ed Foychuk does a cool demonstration how to do a Manator on one of his courses. So all this stuff you guys might like, I don't know. The only problem is, uh, you know, the technique is kind of very, I don't know, um, too dull for me. I like more advanced methods and techniques. But like I said, I could just, you know, pick out the gesture and do my own way of drawing the figure. So like I said, I'm sort of like a, a scientist when it comes to drawing figures and faces. I like to analyze and create a, a new idea, a new formula. I try to make it a little bit simple so you guys can understand it. This is really cool, the alien heads. And uh, I think the next uh, chapter is about aliens and other galac yeah, galactic travelers. All right, so let's look at this. Here again, the stick figure, and you, you, here you see the shapes. Here's sort of like, uh, this kind of reminds me, oh, um, Battlestar of Galactica. That was the one I was trying to remember. Kind of looks like it a little bit. The droids. I think it was the uh, the enemy. The uh... I remember when Battlestar Galactica came out. I was so crazy about it because it's sort of like a, if it was like kind of watching Space Nineteen Ninety Nine, and then at the same time Star Wars. I was always into fantasy. Always, I loved these uh, fantasy shows. Like when I was a kid, Star Trek was also one of my favorite ones. Then when Star Wars came out, I was spellbound. That's like, and then the plot of the movie, the story, and then you find out later on that Luke is the son of Darth Vader. I'm, I'm telling you, you just can't make this up. They, they made a great plot in that movie. And to think that Leia was also Luke Skywalker's sister. It's like everything was a, like a mystery in that movie. So, yeah. Um... After Star Trek, after Space 1999, after Battlestar Galactica. Actually, my first love with the planet was the Planet of the Apes. That was my first love. No, I wouldn't say my first love. My first love was Star Trek. And then after that came um, Space 1999 and then the Planet of the Apes. Then after the Planet of the Apes came Star Wars. Actually, no, Battlestar Galactica. After Battlestar Galactica came Star Wars, yeah. yeah. Maybe I should just write down in order my first love of fantasy movies. <laughs> all right, guys, let's go back to the book. So, like you can see, it's all oval shapes. Notice he does shortcuts for the, um, for the figure right here. And I got to admit, he's very, very good with the inking and stuff. 
very good with the ink. I have the you know the brush uh, the brush ink pen, but I still haven't had time to practice it. I mean, I I've done some sketches um, and some of them I posted on YouTube, but it doesn't look really really good. I still need a lot of practice with the brush ink. Maybe maybe I should just go back with markers. I think markers would be more better. I guess start you know working with markers better. Because the brush pen, you got to really hold it steady. It's kind of like a regular sable brush. But the inking is phenomenal on this. It's really good. You can tell he did a lot of thick ink in the outline. After that, he started doing smaller details. That's how it's done. And I have a book, which I think I've shown you guys not too long ago. How to draw alien babes and princesses and queens and all that stuff. Yeah, it was uh, all about inking and that was a great book too. You can see he does the circle. I'll show you right now. The circle, the jaw, then you do the, you know, the grid lines for the features. After that, you start adding the eyes, the cheekbones, the, I guess the alien structure of the face, whatever. And then, yeah, that's how you actually create your alien. So in a way, um, the book is okay. I mean, this would be great for kids, you know, if you have kids. Um, you can actually get this for your kids. Um, I know if I was a kid, I mean, if I was a father, I, which unfortunately I, I'm not a father, I would definitely um, buy every single book for my kid um, and train my kid, you know, teach him because some of these books are a little bit complicating. So, yeah. If you're an artist and you're a father, you can actually teach your kids how to do all this stuff. Like I said, people, man, when you have children that are very talented and they're very gifted, don't, you know, turn an eye, a blind eye on them. You know, focus on your children because your children are the children of tomorrow. OK, so it could be any race, anybody. And I've seen how a lot of parents actually mistreat their children. They don't care about their children. They abuse their children. I was one of them, trust me. I can tell you, and I, and I, many of you already know what I went through as a kid. So, you know, try to focus on your children because your children, trust me, they're beautiful kids. They have a beautiful imagination. They can be anything in the future. So, yeah. So buy this for your kids, you know. Buy this for your kids because maybe your kids might love this. And after we're through with this book, we'll continue with the other techniques. And uh, I'm going to rate this book. I'm going to rate it, you know, for kids, I will rate it a 10, you know. Because at least it gives you an idea how to form everything, you know. That's a cool drawing of Frankenstein right there. Awesome. Okay, here's a closing word by Randy Martinez. And I'm going to look him up. Um, let me see who he worked for. Uh, la, 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 la. Doesn't tell you. Oh, he's an artist for Lucasfilm. Look at that. Lucasfilm is uh, Star Wars. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, he's a professional artist. He's not just any ordinary independent artist. Because some of the books are that I have are from independent artists. These are people that actually work for either Marvel or DC. Oh, but this guy worked for um, Lucas Films. So, let's read this. Uh, I hope uh, you've enjoyed drawing and learning a few things about um, these great monsters and aliens. Thank you so much for using my book as a start starting point in your artistic journey, but don't stop here. The most important thing you can do is continue drawing. That's right, buddy. Second to that, don't limit uh, your subjects to scary beasts and aliens. There are so many interesting things in this world, flowers, trees, cars, and of course, people. That's true. The more you learn to draw, the better your art will be. 
I encourage you to invent your own creatures as well. Take what you've learned here and what you see around you to create some truly scary monsters. You can even write stories about your creations. Who knows, you might have the next legendary monster creeping around in the head of yours. <laughs> now, uh, get out there and draw until we meet again. Boo, sincerely, Brandy Martinez. Great inspiration. I love his writing. He's fantastic. So, yeah, okay. Um, I would rate this a 10 for children. If you have kids, I actually highly recommend it. Okay, guys, let's continue. Let us continue. Let us continue with techniques. And first, we're going to start with, oops, at Foychuk. All right. Let me explain this very carefully with you guys, okay? This is not Andrew Loomis, uh, the Andrew Loomis method. This is more of, um, how do you call it? Um, sort of like close to an Andrew Loomis method. But the grid lines are formal, you know, they're formed differently and the segments are different. And just like the other book I showed you, the book that I just showed you right now, that the eyes are going to be lower and the nose is going to be here. The mouth is going to be around here. So in order to figure this out, um, you got to start, a, like always, a circle, the cross. After that, you do a line here and another line here. But make sure that the lines are the same length here, 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 and here. It's like if you were counting one, two, three, but everything even, the same length. Then, see how I did it here in blue? Well, the blue, the blue line is supposed to be the eye line. And then over here, which I should have done in blue also, let me do that in blue. That would be the mouth line, okay? Then the same process here. This is the female. And remember that the female's jaw is a little bit rounder and it's a little pointy, just a little bit pointy. Remember that the, the man's jaw, when you do the man's jaw, is wide. Okay, always keep that in mind. And then when you draw the woman, and let me do this in darker, you know what you guys can see. It's wider, the man. And then when you draw the woman, you're going to do it a little smaller, kind of like a little curve. That's about it. Now, don't get me wrong, there are women that have sort of like a wide uh, chin, but that's mm, seldom. You can't, you don't really, most women have like a small round pointy. Some of them are pointy, some of them are round, like a big round like that, okay? Always keep in mind. Also, another thing before I forget, uh, when you're doing the end of the jaw, the end of the jaw, say the ears over here, right? The end of the jaw of a man is something like this, okay? is more straight down, has more structure, but a woman's jaw would be like this, is more curved, okay? So always keep that in mind. Women's faces are, you know, uh, some, some of the stuff in both, the male and the female, are kind of the same, but there's a lot of difference, okay? Because you could tell by the eyes, the structure of the face, and the structure of the ears also. Um, so, yeah, that's why uh, women or men are different. Okay, so then we got, um, this one is sort of like a shortcut uh, to this, of course. This is more like the three-quarter view. This came from the same... Um, video segment that I saw by Ed Foychuk. This whole thing is because this process is the same process, except that here is a three quarter view. So I should have wrote that down. Three, let me write down here three quarter view. And then this one is the cartoony way of doing the same thing. What was really cool about Ed Foychuk that he actually gave us an idea how to do the realistic way and the cartoon way for the, you know, for cartooning. So let's get started. Let me show you how we did this. And let's put this on the side. And I plan to glue this afterwards. And then perhaps I'll probably gonna end up um, maybe doing two videos on this and it looks all, like all my paper finished. So 
it looks like I'm gonna have to open another pack. I'm just gonna open this. I got enough paper here to last me like probably I'm gonna say three months or more. Who knows? So there's plenty of paper that I can use now. Before I used to worry about, oh, let me use the backside. Oh, let me use the corner. No, now I have plenty of paper now. Even though it's office paper, but it's pretty expensive. It's like around $10 to get a whole pack. Uh, but it's got plenty of paper. It's got like probably, let me see. Let me read how many paper. Oh. Yeah, 750 sheets. Can you believe that? And it's actually office paper. So that's good enough for, I would say, more than three months. It depends how many tutorials I do and how many sketches I do. But I haven't been doing any sketches, like my own drawings lately. Um, I should. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start doing that. Um, but since I'm going to start working in, in pen and ink and all that, I'm going to use some type of different paper. All right, so let's go, get started with this. And I'm going to do it in black pencil. You can see the whole process. Okay. And we're going to do a female head. So this is almost like the Loomis method, but this takes a different approach. So what we're going to do is a line here, right? And a line here, right? And a line here. And then you're going to take your ruler and do this. So all you have to remember that this is going to be one, two, three parts of the head. After that, you're going to do, first, let's do the eye line. We're going to do the eye line. So we're going to do it in red. Let me sharpen this baby for a second. Hold on. Make her a little sharper. And I'm, I think I'm going to have to use another red pencil. I'm gonna, I'll find it. So remember, the eye line is going to fall between this line and this line. So it's going to be even. So that would be my eye line. All right. That's going to be my eye line. Okay. So after that, this will be my mouth line. But I'm not going to do the mouth line first. I'm just going to do the shape. So like an oval shape for the jaw, for the bottom of her face. And he explains this very well, that usually when you do the face, the shape of the face, it, you know, it's sort of like the Loomis method that, you know, you don't want to do it outside the circle. You're going to go inside the circle like this. And I've seen a lot of cartoonists that actually work this way. So you're going to visualize the mouth there. Then right away, you're going to visualize the chin there, even though this is a little bit off, but don't worry about it. As long as you get the proportions right. Don't worry about the segments here. You just, you're going to need the segments, of course. But once you go along with this, you, you know, you're going to start seeing the face start shaping little by little. You know, you don't have to worry too much about, you know, these lines. But that is important. You need to do that first. Okay. Then, then I'm going to show you an easy way how to do this without using all this. Okay. So. Um, I'm going to do the, um, the segments for the eyes right here. And it usually started here in the center. That's the way he did it. And you, if you take his course, you're going to notice that this will be the end of the eye and this will be the other end of the eye. So he does, you know, an oval, a circle. He does, he actually used circles, but I'd rather just use an oval for now. I'm going to use an oval and I want to make sure it's nice and level. Like that. Then right here would be, he did a circle for the nose. Okay. And then he did segments for the lips right there. Then he started working. Um, this is not the hairline. Remember, the hairline would be around here. So he did another line here. And then rest, that's when he started doing the hair coming out like that. First, he does the ears. And then he starts working with the hair straight down. Okay. So um, I'm going to get my black pencil and I'm going to sharpen this. So that way you guys get an idea how this is done. 
and you gotta take your time doing this because of course there's a there's a lot to this okay so you gotta take your time doing this stuff here so now i'm gonna work with her features if i want um i can shape the face first but i usually like to start with the features first you know why because that way little by little i can start shaping everything so always remember even with the Loomis method, you know, even if, if you have a, you know, the idea of the shape already, don't go too far at it. First, work with the features. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to work with the features. And remember that the eyebrows are underneath this line here. So we're going to do the eyebrows. Maybe this eye a little bit down and change her expression. And then we'll work with the bridge of her nose. We already have the circle for the nose, so all we got to do is kind of measure where the uh, outline of the nose is from. With, yeah, we could do that. Also, if you want, when you do the circle for the nose, you can actually indicate where that eye is going to be at. So in this case, this eye is a little further in. So let me fix this one better. Actually, let me erase this. I should have did that first. I should have worked with the nose first. It would have been better, yeah. And let me get my, um, let's fix this better. All right. It's no problem, don't worry about it. You go always, you're going to end up making mistakes, but don't worry about it. You're going to fix it. As long as you get the proportions right. So it matters. Oh, it looks like this eraser got really dirty by using it too much. All right. So right here would be the end of her eye. Okay, so now I can do the nostrils. Then here, the red, I can start working with her lips. A stretch M shape for the lips. And then I'm gonna work with the, the contour of her lips. Then right here, bottom of her lips. And this jaw, just bring a little higher and that's it, you see? Little by little, how the face is starting to develop, just by being patient, and you'll be able you'll be able to see these things. And then let's work with the cheekbones here. She might have big cheekbones. Then we'll start doing the bottom of her jaw. And if you know, if you want to do it like a Marvel style face, you could. The constructions are going to help you. All you have to do. As the artist, figure the rest out. That's all you got to do. Let's fix this eye a little better. Also, in his drawing course, you're going to see how he draws the eyes. Now, I, I'm not doing it exactly like he does it. I'm, I, I usually, I'm doing it the way I usually do it. Even though this eye, did not, not too happy with this side of the eye, but it doesn't matter. It just, the whole point is that, is that you get the idea how to construct the face. I might do a, a little bit of a mistake here, but don't worry about it. It's up to you, the artist, to do it better. That's all that matters here. And then we'll fix her jaw. And like I said, the, you know, the bottom of the jaw is sort of like smooth and curvy, small, like a U shape for a woman. Let's say we fix this over here. This would be her jaw. And remember that the neck Hmm, this looks like Catherine Deneuve. It's one of my favorite French actors, Catherine Deneuve. So 
It's a beautiful French. She made a, a very, I don't know, underground erotic movie called um, Belle de Jour. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that, but for those that like those type of movies, foreign movies, Belle de Jour was a very strange erotic movie. It turned out to be a tragic at the end. I'm not going to tell you everything about the movie. But it's a good movie. You should actually look out for it. If you're into foreign movies. Yeah, Catherine Deneuve. She was very beautiful. There was another one that she made. It was called Lovers Like Us. That was like a comedy. And she was running away from her husband. Then she met this French guy that was going to an island. Then she wanted to escape. From her husband but the french guy wanted to be alone whatever it was a funny movie but you know something the french guy even though he didn't want her any he just didn't want her out at his in his side because he was a loner he just wanted to be by himself but he found himself in love with her it was a very nice movie it's called lovers like us with catherine deneuve i forgot the names the name of the other actors yeah, it looks like Catherine Deneuve, kind of. Yeah, sometimes I draw these women from my head and they always, or somebody from my, you know, I draw somebody or something from my head. They turn out to look like somebody. I don't know what's the mystery to that, but anyway. Catherine Deneuve. Okay, so yeah, now you have an idea how how to do this technique. Okay, so now we're going to work with uh, this same technique, but we're going to do a side view, which is a three-quarter view using the same form and the same method. And this looks so good that I'm probably going to post this on YouTube. And I only got five more days uh, uh, the Facebook, um, Facebook jail. And hopefully when that's over, I'll, I'll post some of this stuff on Facebook, on my Facebook group. Alrighty. Again, we're going to start, um, the circle and we're going to do the same procedure. And it will be sort of like the Loomis method, kind of. We're going to do um, a vertical line and then we're going to do the same procedure a line underneath the circle a line on top of the circle and another line for where the chin is going to be at and then you're going to ask me dude where are the eyes going to go very simple I'm going to take my blue pencil and show you the difference the eye is going to be here, people. The mouth is going to be here. So all you got to do, and I'm going to do it very lightly in pencil, is visualize the contour of her face or his face. It doesn't matter. Well, in this case, is going to be a woman. So I'm going to draw a woman. And then after that, you can start the contour here. First, do the jaw and then work your way here. Just like over here, there's another one I got to show you. You can start over here first and then work over here. Doesn't matter as long as you get, because I noticed that Ed Foychuk, uh sometimes starts here, then sometimes he'll start here. So it's a real mission when you look at his, um, his tutorial. Okay. When you do this, remember, the eyes are going to be in the center of the line, never on top or in the bottom. This is a different approach, people, okay? So the eyes are going to be, and let me do this in black pencil. So the eyes, you can start the nose first if you want. So let's do that. Let's start the nose. That's I think that's the way he does it. He starts the nose. You can also do like we did here, the circle first, right near the, the, the vertical line, which is on the left side of the vertical line, do the circle, and that would be, then you do the outline for the nose. 
Like for example, here is the nose line right here, right? So you could do a circle like this and then slowly do the outline and you'll see it'll connect just like you're seeing right now. So that's another good way. That's something that he didn't do, but I actually figured that out. So here's the, um, how you call that again? Oh my Lord, I forget these words. The filter, the filter underneath the nose. And then now I can start working with the lips. And right here. And remember that the eye is not on top of this line, it's right in the center. So you start here. Oh, there goes that dog saying, hey, dude, you still drawing? Yeah, I, I am, you know. Hopefully you stay quiet the whole day. Oh, he got insulted. You can tell by the, uh, the expression of his vocal cords. Yeah, dog's got vocal cords. There you go. He's actually showing me, dude, you're messing around with the wrong dog. Yeah, he could hear me from far away. I love dogs, and I really sympathize for, you know, dogs that are actually kept outside in the heat. These people are really stupid, you know. No compassion for animals. I would never do that to my dogs. Never. No compassion. Then we have the hairline right here. And remember the V shape for the hairline. And yeah, I think this really works out. I mean, you know, everything is very classical, that's for sure. The 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 method itself, kind of like a Loomis style, you know. And then remember that the neck like this women's necks are slender so you always got to keep that in mind now i'm going to do her ears over here and then do the outline of her hair then Let's fix the nose though, right there. And then we'll darken this part right there. So we have an idea how his uh, method actually um, actually works. You know, it's very uh, effective. Um, the this is this came out okay. I'm just not too happy with that eye, and I'm so disappointed. I don't know why that came out like that. But maybe if I keep working, the problem is if I keep erasing, it will damage the drawing. So let me just do it very, I'm going to do it in pencil first. Yes, that's what I'll do. I should have done it in pencil first. I keep forgetting that drawing features, I should do better with a pencil and then run it in black pencil afterwards. You know, darker pencil. So the problem is a darker pencil, even though it's great, has a great good feel to it and everything. The only problem with this is that it's very hard to erase sometimes. Let me measure this over here for a second. <coughs> I want to make sure I have the same correct length on the eye here. Yeah, it was a little bit too small. So I should be there. Just a little bit there, so yeah. Like I said, you're gonna end up doing mistakes, but don't don't let that scare you. Just go back and fix it. Don't do what I do that I do in black, everything black pencil. Do with regular pencil because that way you could erase it. So yeah, I think that came out a little bit better. It's just a little bit of a mark there, but I'm gonna fix it. Now I can do the eyelashes better. So very carefully, I'm going to do her eyelashes up the top. 
and then leave. All right, so now it's better, way better. Maybe fix this one better. That's what I'll do. I'm going to fix this one better here. Yeah. Sometimes I'm never satisfied. I like to fix my drawings. Just bring the eyebrow just a little higher. That's it. Better now. Now it definitely looks like Catherine Deneuve. Definitely. Catherine Deneuve. Catherine Deneuve. I think she did British movies also. She was very popular in Europe. Very beautiful woman too. And she looks good for her age because I've seen a recent photo of her. It's like, I don't know how she does it. How does she stay young? But there's a rumor that she eats um, a lot of, she's sort of like a vegetarian, I think. She eats healthy. And I think that's why a lot of people stay young, because they eat, they stay away from bad foods and stuff. Catherine Deneuve, let's fix her ears a bit, a little bit here. Let's erase these construction lines here. There's too many construction lines here that's just throwing everything off. Because I plan to post this. Make it better. Yeah, now it looks a little better. Okay, I'm going to finish it later and then post it because um, we still got a lot to do, people. So let's do this one, the shortcut. And the shortcut is almost like the one I showed you. So we'll do it um, right here. We'll, we'll do it in pencil. This time we'll do it in pencil because I have a feeling that I might end up doing a mistake. So at least in pencil I get to erase the curve. This will be the chin right there, and then the jaw would be around here. Then the eye line should be around here. Then, of course, the nose line should be around here. So I'm going to do this correctly. The eye line will be around here. Okay. There you go. So it's the same process as this, except that I didn't use too many lines like like I did with this right here. So so bear with me, this is gonna come out cool. So what he did was he started here first and uh, this will be the contour of the side of the face here. Like that. Then he works with the nose. I wanna do the circle, for the outline for that nose right near the circle reaches the circle then right here would be the corner of the nose so I have an idea what I'm doing now so I go up I'm going to work with their eyes if I want I could also um, use a little bit of the Hogarth method if I want but I'm going to try to figure out the way he did it because he started working with the features. He didn't do any planes. I noticed that Foy Chuck is a little bit different. He doesn't use any planes. Um, but you can actually visualize it if you want. You know, you could train your eye to see the, um, the planes and the construction lines. And then you'll be able to know where that eye is going to be. But just remember, the corner of the nose is going to tell you where that corner of the eye is going to be at. And of course, when you visualize the, the planes of the cheek lines, you're going to visualize 
the eyebrow, right? So, and then because in the video that he was demonstrating, the class that I took, um, the course, he started the nose and then he started the eyebrows. Then he did the eyes last. But I'm going to do it a little bit different. I started with the eyes first. Maybe I should have done it the way he did it. But, you know, you just never know. He started with the eyebrows first. Then he did this eyebrow right here. Then, then, then that's when he did the eyes. But it really doesn't matter. As long as you get the proportions right. Then right here, it would be the ears. Right here. This would be the ears. And then you could finalize... Do the cheek line here, and then you can finalize the jaw right there. Let's say she's looking on the corner of her eyes. Try to fix this side of the eye also, okay? Then you might probably, after you do the features, and then you do the mouth, of course. Um, I think the nose is a little bit too high, yeah. Because you can tell that this technique was a little bit different. So he did the nose a little higher. So let's do it the way he did it. So. Okay, right here would be the bottom of the nose. So say the line would be around here. But we got it right. Don't worry about it. We got this. We can tackle this. This would be the corner of the nose, and this would be the end of the nose. Well, so far, it's okay now. Then, of course, the mouth line is here, and then we'll start working with the mouth. Now, you could go back if you want. You can fix... Even though you already did the outline, but you could actually do this better now. You could actually do more form because women's faces are very rounded. So you want to fix that a little better. Four. I should have never taken that medication yesterday. Oh my God, it's like the effect of it is just really, really unbelievable. Side effects. Because it's doing something to my vision. I can't tell what it is. I gotta be careful with these medications I take. Because they got side effects. So, uh, so bear with me. Um, I notice I've been doing some mistakes, but I'm not going to let this bullshit stop me. The medications I take are too strong.
Make sure you have the big earring. So yeah, this actually works. Even the uh, shortcut actually works also. So remember, this is the same process that he uses, but this one has more lines and this one is just less lines. So you can actually practice this. And remember the jaw technique that I showed you that you always gotta remember, and this is not part of his, um, his course. I actually remember this, the jaw that has to be a little bit different, the male and the female. So I will post this so you can see this. All right, so now we're gonna work on the bodies now. And I will post this later on. I'm gonna work with the body now. So and then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a break. I know I promised you I was gonna show you some Robert Marzullo methods, but I'm gonna leave that for the next videos. That way we'll do everything in all in one shot. Okay, so this one is the um, the figure technique that I was going to show you. First, I'm going to start with this, and I'm going to give you an idea how to do a gesture form stick figure. That way, this is going to help you construct the body. And this is something that uh, Foychuk explains. Remember that when you're doing the stick figure and the joints, make sure that this is aligned with this. So visualize like a, an invisible line going down, okay? Make it even on both top and the bottom. Don't worry because some people, you know, there are times people use this technique and sometimes they want to exaggerate the hips so they make this bigger. Do not worry about that. Now we're going to do the legs. And I'm going to show you that you can make the hips bigger, okay? Right here, you're going to measure. That would be, if you want, you measure here. Measure here, measure it so that way you get the right proportions. All right, the head would be around here. Kneecaps, bottom of the leg, All right? So what you're gonna do next is, um, and that's what he does, that you visualize this, because women's uh, torso are smaller. So this would be, and I'm gonna do a little bit different because that way you can see that this is sort of like an oval but remember, do this open V shape in order to form the size of a woman's shoulder because women on the top is smaller, okay? Then the hips are bigger. And remember what Marzulu and um, Loomis actually explains that the hips are big on a woman, okay? Like that. And then the shoulders... Sorry, the, um, the torso is smaller. But always remember that that... Well, this is going to be a different approach. So this is just a, an, an example I'm showing you. So you're going to do another circle. And then, of course, the circle is going to be big, but in the center of the two joints, okay? Don't go far out in the center. Visualize it in the center. That's the way... Uh, Ed Foy Chuck explains, let's work with their arms. When we work with their arms, remember that this part is in the same length. And if you want, you could do the rib cage. That'll help you figure out the length of the arms. Do the uh, right here. And this will be the breast right here. So let's do her arms. And her hands fall right around here right in the center, past the hip line, okay? Now, I'm going to, you know, start working with the rest of her body. So, notice that I don't touch this dot here and this dot here. I sort of do an outline passing that dot. The same thing over here. And remember that women's waist go in and go out, all right? I'm going to go all the way, all the way down, okay, all the way down. Then I'm going to visualize um, the, the V shape, the crotch area, 
that will be her crotch area okay now I'm going to start visualizing cylinder shapes like that now he didn't do any uh, you know cylinder shapes um, I'm going to do villain you know to make it more simple to understand then over here also sort of like if I was doing really shorts like really high shorts on a woman so what you're doing is you're doing shorts on a woman but really high like on those commercials who wear short shorts and they were wearing really high shorts that they were actually showing their whole leg so yeah that's what this is okay how many of you remember that commercial? Who wear short shorts? Okay, so then I'm gonna start working with the legs. Okay, so now here's the shoulder and the neck. And we're gonna make the head a little higher because women's necks are a little bit slender so we have an idea and we want to make sure that we make the proportions of the head correct and not just only that is two heads you're going to see two heads something like that and if you want before you do this whole process, you can start with the head first and then measure the two heads and then do the stick lines in order because I know I noticed that maybe this is a little bit off kind of, but it doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. Um, you're going to do, you're going to actually get this. Okay. So then right here, we'll do the shoulders. Could be that maybe I exaggerated the shoulders. I, I think that's it. Yeah, maybe I should let me erase this right here. Just make it nice and level there. Right there, okay. Yeah, it's just I'm so used to doing superhero women and I gotta remember that we're actually concentrating on you know on a human body. Then I'm gonna make another line underneath here, another line. that that will be the bottom of the breast. So the bottom of the breast is gonna pass that center line, just like I've shown you guys before. You can do the teardrop or you can do the triangle, the upside down triangle to do the breast of the woman. Okay, so you can do that if you want. And um, just keep working at it. Then right here you can do, you can start little by little. Um, work with the clerical bone. Fix over, you know, the breast a little bit where it, goes near the um, the muscle bicep parts over here, which I keep forgetting the name of this. And I keep forgetting that a woman is really slender, so I have to always pay attention to that. And then I'm gonna do the outline and round off a little, just a little bit the rib cage, and then round off a little bit the breast to make it look like a real breast and the neck, the artery of the neck and the shoulders. Fix the shoulders a little bit. Mouth, nose, eyes, all right. And then we'll add some hair, like that. Okay, so now we can, once we have this done, we can work with the crotch area. Okay, and then work with the rest of her leg. And the same process, you can do different positions. So let me erase um, this example that I did before. So that you can actually erase afterwards. Sorry, you can start. Start doing the uh, stick figure. You can do the head first. This will be the stick figure and do any pose you want. Mm -hmm. 
Maybe she's crossing her arms. Like that, okay. And say she's like putting her, you know, this arm up on her hair and maybe this, maybe both arms up on her hair or stuff. So, so what you gotta do is just remember pretty much like we did here, like we did over here. Oh, that's all you gotta remember. It's just all these certain elements. And then after that, you can start working doing the shapes. Let's work with this lady right here first. We'll do her shapes. This over here, we'll do this one. Do her shapes right there. And then we can start working with the shape of her body. Remember, this is a three quarter view. So the crotch area is gonna seem to curve this way and this way, okay? So it's a, a three quarter view, so. Twist. So I usually like to work with the core first and then do, you know, work later with the, um, the limbs afterwards. And then this part right here, this outline is gonna get, it's gonna be a little bit closer to the joint, of course, because there's a three quarter view. And this one is gonna be a little further out. You see the distance? And that's because you are doing a three quarter view. It's sort of like, you know, the perspective of your figure. So this takes a lot of work, you know, well, not a lot of work, but you know, a lot of practice. Just keep practicing this method. Then let's finish this lady here. And that's it okay all right so let's do another technique which is this one um this is um drawing a man and you could use the same technique for a man too if you want uh this is more like ed foy chuck also all of this is ed foy chuck so let me show you how this one is and let's use another piece of paper so you guys get an idea. So let me see, I heard a noise in the front for some reason. Oh, it looks like the lady in the back came. She's got a loud mouth speaks really loud. You're going to hear her talk. The minute she opens the front door of the gate, you're going to hear her mouth. It's amazing. Okay, so bear with me. Um, this will be the shoulder right here. And this will be the hip area right here. So before I work with the hip area, and I'm going to do it the way he did it, he did the, um, the hip. Sorry, before I work with the torso, I mean, you would do it both ways, the torso and the hip area. This right here would be the hip area. This right here would be the torso. And the next thing you're gonna do is do the V shape. The, you know, sort of like the, uh, he actually says the underwear shape. And that's when you're gonna start, you know, start working with the, uh, the lines, this line here, and then the joint for the torso, which is going to be the arms. Do the arms right here. And then you do the head over here. Now you got the V shape and, you know, pretty much everything is in place. Then you can start, you know, fleshing it out, start you know, refining the drawing, trying to find and try to train your eye to see all the shapes of the anatomy 
you know, do it lightly. That's the way you do it, okay? You can use also oval shapes like uh, this part right here, which I'm going to show you in a minute. But let's um, keep practicing on this type of formula because this one um, might be more easier for you guys to do. You can start with the torso and right here would be the pelvic area, which is the hip area. And then do a line here and sort of like the balance line and you can do the V shape. And then after that, you can start um, doing the joints here and oh my God, those people are so loud. And then we got the leg here. And then we'll have this leg going back and then the head. And that's it. And then what you're going to do is once you have this whole process, you're you're going to little slowly visualize where everything goes. Everything should be placed. The neck. Here's the arms. waist so this is a woman we're doing now this was a man right here this is a woman and make sure you okay you guys can see this pretty good i think so you could wish you know visualize little by little sort of like an oval shape right there this actually works This would be the neck right here, and then the eyes right there. Okay, so that came out pretty good, I guess. Okay, now we're going to do this one right here. This is another one that he actually demonstrates, which is pretty good. It actually works. This will be where the uh, hip area would be. We do a circle. And then we do a line for the leg. A line for the bottom part of the leg. And then we start doing um, ovals, like up to here. But do it thin. Don't, I mean, try, don't make it big ovals. Try to visualize like the size of the leg, right? That's what you got to visualize. Then you're going to do the outline. After that, then you do the outline. And then right here would be the bottom of the crotch. And then we'll see the, um, everything starts taking form. And then you can add the muscles, muscles over here. I need a lot of practice with muscles. Muscles are not easy to do. So you have an idea how to do um, this one already, okay? So let's try it now using the underwear method. So let's get another piece of paper. And let's get this up, I don't need this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the red. Let's do it this way better. Okay. Torso. That would be where the shoulders would be. shape That's, that would be the um the hip area and we'll do the legs and 
these people are very very noisy unbelievable if it's not the people in the back it's the people in the side it's just incredible i'm not used to this uh, i'm used to quiet areas where i used to live at in new york upstate new york was very very quiet You can look it up, Three Barns Road. Yeah, Three Barns Road. That's where I used to live. Way, way back. Miami is full of, um, I don't know. I don't want to get into it, but that issue. It's so hard to do a tutorial. Kind of really messes up everything. Okay, now we have the shoulders there. Right here, then we'll do the head right here. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to start visualizing the underwear method right there. Okay, that will be the underwear method. And then after that, all you got to do is worry about everything. So I'm going to do like half. First, I'm going to work from the top. Do a hint of the features there. If you want, you can do the uh, ovals before you do the outlines if you want, but you know, try not to exaggerate the ovals. That actually will help you out. So yeah, this uh, might do some improvement in your figure drawing. Okay, so you have an idea how to do that. Also, we could do it this way. So I'm showing you various ways how you can do this technique. It's like if you were doing outlines, like a hint of the outlines, that's really helpful. See how I did the outlines? Here's the um, leg joint, and you're doing outlines like this. 
but don't exaggerate too much just do it the same you know train your eye to see the size of the leg you know don't do this fast and the head will be around here clavicle bone neck artery shoulders chest this takes a lot of time but it's it works so all you have to do is connect those lines like that and connect the lines over here also you could use the ovals also. And the feet and the joint. Okay. So that's how you do the Ed Foy Chuck uh, figure course that I'm taking. But I really recommend you guys to look up. I think it's... MOD or something like that uh, just look it up uh, art apps and uh, and you'll see it um, it's gonna tell you you know courses that you can take so let's do this one the last one we're gonna do this one is again yeah this one we'll do again and this time we'll do a different approach on this and then the, uh, we'll work with uh, the uh, office box uh, I forgot his name we're gonna do with I think that I think this will be the last one I'll do. All right, so again, let's do a pose. This one's gonna be a different approach. It's the same thing like we did here, but a different approach. It's gonna be a little bit different. Now I'm going to do the circle in between the two dots, just like I mentioned before. Fix this rib cage here. And then do the arms. This arm here in the head. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the V shape first. Once I do that V shape. I'm going to start working with the body and then do cylinders if I want. Like that. So that actually works. Okay. So you have an idea how to do that. Except we didn't do the V shape before. We did it uh, after we did the outline of the body, then we did the V shape. But this time we started out with a V shape and then after that we did the around us of the body. Uh, you can do it pretty much like the primitive way that he does that he does. Hold on, let me wait till these people close the door. Oh my God, they're so loud. Incredible, incredible. I don't know where my brother finds these people really. I just don't know. They're very loud. Somebody new that moved in the back. I don't know. They're very loud. Right, like this. Okay. Let's just um, do some type of pose here. Let's keep this a little. Fix the proportions. Okay, now what I could do is I could, you know, do hints. A hint over here, a hint over here, a hint over here. Okay, then a hint, sort of like an underwear shape here. Okay, once I have these elements done, I'm already seeing you're ready to do the body. That's what's, you know, actually telling me. 
Okay, so now all I have to do is work at it. Work at it. Work at it. Until I get the correct shape. Not bad, not bad. Let's try this with a man, with a maybe a superhero or a mutant or something. And let's see if we can find the, I don't know, a pose or something. We'll find a pose. Um, actually, let's use the Black Panther book. We'll find a pose. Maybe we'll go do this one, yeah. Yeah, we'll do this one. So the Black Panther has got big, a big chest. Make sure the same length. And then it's gonna be the leg. Right here would be the bottom leg right here. And then this is the arms. And then we'll do that circle. Can we see if the camera can see this? Yeah. Good. So let's do this. Um, start working with, we'll do the cape. He's got this big cape near his head. Uh, like a covering or something. And this will be the chest area. We'll do the we're not going to do like the lady that we did the breasts but this one yes we're going to do the shoulders here because we're planning out where everything is going to go and then of course here's the um, the underwear um, technique right here okay so far so good then let's correct the head okay so all I got to worry about is the proportions and the outline of the body and refining this. So I'm going to do the arms first here. This arm. Torso. The rib cage goes in like that. And then this leg goes this way. Like that. Like that. So it looks a little bit the same, not that much. I mean, it's not finished. It's just, you know, a rough sketch that I'm doing. But I'm showing you how to use um, the method in case you want to try this out. So all you got to do is just practice and that, that'll be it. That's it. You know, just do the best you can. Chest area, muscle details. He's got a lot of rib cage, that's for sure. And
okay so so far that's how you do this uh, technique all right guys um we're gonna do the other video um everything is gonna be robert marzulu hopefully that you guys enjoyed this show this video and just leave me your comments please i need to find out if this is actually gonna work for you guys um because these are different um methods um and uh I'm going to see if I can find, once I finish with this video, I'm going to find the name and then I'll tell you in the next video the name of the course that I'm taking. Well, anyway, you guys, good luck and keep practicing.